Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, a bonus episode this week for you, and the reason will become very clear in a moment. Everett Hanna, who is the chair of the Alberta Backcountry Hunting and uh, Angling Association here in our province, joins us. Uh, the Backcountry, I should say, Alberta Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Get this, the, the title right, Michael. Um, Everett, uh, we're talking to you about uh, a recent decision by Wes Fraser to open up some uh, logging uh, up in the Brad Creek area, upwards of 900 hectares maybe on the block. Um, I guess, first of all, your initial reaction to um, a, a, an active logging uh, proposal. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. Um, <clears throat> highly contentious location and topic as you can imagine um being so close to the major city center like calgary i think that those areas have become sort of de facto non-motorized meccas for uh, outdoor recreationists of all sorts be it an angler and a hunter or a, you know a mountain biker or hiker or a forager whatever it is you like to do out there so just at a high level i'm not surprised to see the level of pushback that's already been received from the public, uh, including our membership in the province. And um, our reaction is one uh, that we take to similar large scale proposals of uh, you know various forms of habitat disturbance. And that is the cum consideration for cumulative effects. Um, we oftentimes take these one off projects uh, like this area, 700 and something hectares. I think you said off the hop there. That's a number I have to my mind also that we're talking about. And it might seem like a smaller piece in the Alberta landscape when we look across the board at perhaps a provincial scale. But in aggregate, when you take a look at the map uh, and put that patchwork together, as as it is, you know, you know the effects are um, for wildlife and fish and the likes. That's really the level at which we need to start thinking about these things. Um, layer on top of that, the exacerbation we have right now with precipitation regimes and drought, really in our province. We've got some water here in the last month, which has really you know helped us from just exploding into a fireball. I think, but we're still at the very very low end of moisture conditions. I would say out there. Um, that kind of like context timing is uh, is surprising uh, it sort of makes it not surprising to me to see the reaction from folks um, to this uh, this initial kind of like discussion around this topic, I guess. And, and talk a little bit. I mean, trees are so critical for the filtration of sedimentation into our creeks and rivers. And when you start taking out large swaths, especially along the eastern slopes, um, it it really messes with with not only the the flow of water and soil but also the uh, uh the sedimentation of of critical spawning areas for for fish mm -hmm. yeah no i'm glad you mentioned that that's one of the the key considerations at a more micro level um these spawning habitats are <clears throat> comprised of sorted substrates and you know aquatic systems obviously for bull trout cutthroat trout uh, as you get more erosion, stream bank erosion in particular, we get more silty substrates. And these are really fine, fine particles um, out there in the natural landscape introduced into the aquatic systems. What they do is they sit down in between what are called interstitial spaces or just spaces between, if you imagine a jar full of marbles, right? The spaces in between where there's no marbles. And those spaces are critical for allowing oxygen to flow and for eggs to get uh, planted in reds and spawning sites. As they get filled in and we get more and more embeddedness in that substrate, the quality of those spawning sites is degraded greatly. And that's oftentimes in conservation, one of the more challenging things to deal with, right? A forest is cut down, it's gone. People can see habitat loss. Habitat um, degradation, though, loss of quality is much more difficult oftentimes to perceive and understand and quantify because the habitat appears to still be there, but its quality is degraded. Um, that's the case for sure when it comes to spawning habitat, for example, for fish. Notably, some of these places, um, parts of these places also overlap with um, identified recovery zones for our threatened grizzly bear population, as well as other species that we know to be, you know, not doing so hot, even if they're not formally um, classified as a, as an at-risk species, I guess. Um, so yeah, all of those sort of pieces fit together in this this part of the landscape raise the level of concern for us from a conservation perspective. As a, a, a an advocacy for the outdoors in general, um, Everett, are you folks um, launching any kind of, um, I guess, a, a raising questions with uh, the minister or any other um, 
um, formal stance on on not just the the forestry, but I mean, here we are again talking coal again. Um, uh, sort of the the whole onslaught of um, industrial work being done along the eastern slopes. We we are we don't have a targeted campaign at the moment, though I will say coincidentally we are working collaboratively with um, CPAWS uh, right now on a water conservation video that they just happen to be not really by coincidence when you consider the entire you know context of the time we live in, but they've been working on a documentary to sort of bring more attention to our headwaters and eastern slopes. And uh, we've been working with them on this this topic, but we don't have um, you know a, a letter writing campaign started at the moment. For example, the story is the same one though, as you you know um, just identified. It's one of cumulative effects, regardless of the disturbance type on the landscape, and that's where we tend to draw our attention to to the government. We do understand the balance. I think as all Albertans do to balance um, the need to balance rather economic development with conservation priorities. There's no doubt about it. Our messaging, though, is not necessarily one for moratorium per se on logging or whatever it may be in most cases, um, but more for precise consideration of related effects uh, that we know well. We've documented well in the science the things that could happen if we do, you know, take action X, for example, clear cutting too close to water or too much within the headwaters. Um, that's kind of where we spend our time for the most part is trying to focus on it because that's at the level at which governments are making decisions as much as you might have the in your backyard situation that really catches your attention, a given individual. Um, it's at the landscape level, these decisions and these policies are um, conceived and therefore probably the most strategic level at which to engage uh, government on. So that's kind of where we tend to spend our time. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, have a call to action coming out of this particular um, topic in the near future, given the lightning rod it's it's becoming and growing into. Um, and I know you and I just discussed off camera a few minutes ago, the uh, upcoming opportunity for folks to get involved um, with open houses here. Yeah, uh, so I guess maybe we wrap it up on that note. Uh, if, if folks do want to, uh, uh, get more information because let's face it uh i'm not the the bastion of all information um please uh, there's going to be an open house uh may the 8th in cochrane sorry i don't have the location at this point but uh, easy enough to find uh but may 8th if you want to get more information about uh this logging um, and i imagine it's going to be a full house uh, just the 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 sheer number of people that are concerned about something like this everett there's lots happening with your organization and you know uh let's uh, put a pin in things for right now and we'll come back and and uh, you can bring us up to date on some of the more positive things that uh, you folks are working on in the upcoming year i know there's lots of interest out there so uh thanks so much for your time today we really appreciate it thanks mike appreciate it